Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. A local judge so horrified by the details laid out in his courtroom today that he takes the unusual step of charging the defendant with additional crimes from the bench. Glad you're with us for Local 4 News at 6. I'm Devin Skillio. I'm Kimberly Gill. We're talking about the horrific attack on two elderly sisters in Dearborn in March by a man also accused of sexually assaulting a 13-year-old that same day. Michael Holcomb was in court today for a preliminary hearing, and our Sean Lay was there. Sean. All right, guys, so Judge Mark Summers, after all this excruciating testimony today about what happened to those elderly sisters, the attack on them with the person charged right there, Judge Summers took the unusual step to add charges of assault with intent to murder and one count, uh, two counts of assault with intent to murder, an additional count of unlawful imprisonment. From the bench, the judge issued those charges on his own. In her mind, she believed that the only thing that was going to happen after she was put in the basement is that she was going to die by the hands of the man who spent hours beating her and her helpless sister to a pulp. 19th District Court Judge Mark Summers outraged late today after a day-long preliminary exam presenting the horrific evidence of a brutal sexual assault on two elderly sisters. It happened back on March 17th. Their ages 78 and 85. Prosecutors have accused Michael Holcomb with forcing his way into the sister's home, beating them, assaulting them in the most violent and violating way. One sister was on the witness stand today for an hour, reliving the unthinkable torture. At the end of the exam, Judge Summers was shocked, disgusted, and horrified by what was done to the sisters. It's beyond clear and convincing. Frankly, it's beyond doubt. She was put in the basement for a purpose, told not to leave for a purpose. When one sister was on the stand today, the news media was out of the courtroom. It was just her and the judge and the prosecutor and the defense attorney reliving that horrible situation. So those details will stay in that courtroom, guys. Uh, Holcomb also charged with an attack on a teenager the morning that he allegedly attacked these elderly women. Back to you. That's a disturbing case, or, or two cases, I guess Truly. I should say. Okay, Sean, we appreciate it. That's right. A uh, massage therapist takes the stand at a preliminary hearing for the husband of Dee Warner. Dale Warner is accused of murder, even though, as we've reported this week, his wife's body has never been found. Prosecutors called massage therapist Stacy Brody, trying to paint a picture of a troubled marriage between Dale and Dee. Dee vanished in April of 2021. Brody spoke about one appointment in which she noticed Dee had been bruised. She also faced follow-up questions from Dale Warner's attorney. At that point in time, I was working on her lower half of her body, and I saw the bruising, um, and I asked her, I said, girl, what, what the heck happened? And she kind of got quiet for a minute, and I was like, is it sore? And she said, well, she said, Dale and I got into a fight, and he pushed me into the dresser. You were never in a room to experience what Miss Warner claimed happened, correct? No. So again, this is a preliminary hearing, and that is what will determine if there's enough evidence to go to trial. It'll pick up again next month. Roadwork requires some freeways to and ramps in Oakland County to close today. MDOT is closing southbound I-75 ramps to eastbound and westbound I-696 for the weekend. It's so crews can safely remove an abandoned storm sewer. Two lanes of southbound I-75 from 11 mile to I-696 are also closed. One lane of the ramps to I-696 is going to be back open for the Monday morning commute. All the work, though, is expected to be done by May 12th. Because we think of everything, we managed to clear the rain out just in time for our uh, newscast on the In Your Neighborhood. That's <laughs> right. Salani at 5.30. It looked great. It did. But it's been a wet day other than that. Let's check in with Ron. It has been. It's some areas getting more rainfall right now, Kimberly and Devin, but we are not seeing it all across the entire area just yet. Here's a look into downtown Detroit from Windsor. You see the cloud cover. It's starting to get a little bit gloomier out there. But as we move into Oakland County, you can see Roads are going just fine without any rain showers, but I do want to show you where the rain is right now. So a Zach track 40 radar showing that we have those showers stretching from Sanilac County through northern portions of Lapeer County into northern portions of 
Oakland County and Southern Genesee into Livingston County. Getting a bit of a closer look in as we put into action as well, you can see that they're moving very slowly. We've had a couple of spotty showers moving through Monroe County, but mainly it's this line that's moving through right here that's bringing us some of that heavier rain. So these showers right now, if you're going to be driving up from the Ann Arbor area into the Swartz Creek area, you'll see some of those showers coming down and making some of those conditions a little bit slick out there. So as we time it out, it's moving very slowly. It's going to be in White Lake Township right around 615. So again, this is a slow moving line, but we will see this moving across the area over the next couple of hours. We'll have more coming up. All right, Ron. Today we hear from the superintendent of Detroit's public schools as he speaks on the troubling rise of marijuana issues within the school district. Nikolai Vitti has sent a letter to state officials asking for their help. He says since the legalization of marijuana, his district has seen an alarming increase in drug related incidents. Vitti says the number was 289 from 2019 to 2022. It has risen to more than 1700 between 2021 and 2023. He says a week of school rarely passes without at least one student taken to the hospital after ingesting a marijuana edible. With children as young as second and third grade, um, taking the edible and having extreme hallucinations um, and taking children to the hospital, um, you know, calming children down because uh, they're in a frenzy. And it's obviously uh, disrupting the day to day operations of schools, but more importantly, um, affecting the health of our children. And we've been informed that in some of those cases, the children accidentally took the edibles. When a beloved Oak Park High School coach started feeling off during a basketball game, he didn't realize what was happening to him, but two students did and sprang into action. Our Mara McDonald is in Oak Park tonight. Mara, those students saved his life. One got him on the ground and started those compressions. The other ran and got the AED. Meet Oak Park High juniors, Izzy and Corey. We were watching a basketball game, so we didn't know that we were going to have to jump up and save somebody's life. That somebody was beloved phys ed teacher Al Catula. He'd opted to play in a teacher student basketball game before heading out on a road trip. I called my colleague. She was setting up the game and I said, I'm going to come play in the game. And uh, and I think that saved my life. The game was on and Catula needed to sit down. I was feeling a little winded, but I didn't really notice anything because I've never known anything other than to fight through it. Izzy, sitting in the stands, knew something was wrong. After realizing, staring at him for a while, I realized that, he, like, from a distance, he wasn't okay. So I knew to get up and go over to check his pulse. Izzy got him on the ground. Corey ran to help. Both girls are in the nursing skills program at OTEC, in addition to their regular coursework. One of the first skills that we learned was CPR. We did all of the um, training. Izzy started compressions. Corey got the AED. They made the difference before EMS could get there. The girls both have heartfelt reasons for learning these skills. My baby brother has seizures, so I always wanted to learn CPR to help, <laughs> to learn to help him if he ever needs that. Katola has made a full recovery because of their quick action. I think we should find a way to whatever we do, GoFundMe, whatever, but we should find a way to pay for their college and give them an opportunity to continue this good work. I think it would surprise a lot of people to know that Michigan has no law requiring schools to have AEDs. However, Oak Park decided early on they thought it was a good idea and partnered with Corwell Health. We're in Oak Park. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. A great decision. Exactly right. Incredible. I know. And so touching oh, when yeah, she heard, she, heard what yeah. they're talking about it. Yeah. Uh, teacher shortages remain a huge problem for school districts across the country. And now a local nonprofit is stepping in to try to help fill this deficit. Partnered with Southern New Hampshire University, the organization can transfer existing college credits. And as Paula Tutman shows us, that can jumpstart anyone's jump back into higher education. So the program is called Degree Forward, and it's a nonprofit. And listen, life gets in the way. People don't finish getting their degrees for a number of different reasons, and they can help you get that degree. Finish that degree in a number of different disciplines. But the specific bait that they're dangling right now is for teachers. Once I had my child, I, I stopped. I went to community college, and I wanted to pursue my BA. Not everyone who goes to college has a linear path to complete it. Sometimes that thing called life gets in the way. For 
the benefit of my son to show him while he's in school, I can do it too and make things happen. Our state has a large number of people who have started degrees, but who have not completed them. And while there are many programs to help grown-ups with grown-up lives and jobs and challenges get back to school, this particular program with the nonprofit Degree Forward is making going back and finishing more accessible. So I found Degree Forward back in 2022 and started um, with my AA and just completed that recently. Whatever degree you want, you can finish it, but the Summer 2024 Accelerated Teacher Pathways Program is aimed specifically at filling the gaping hole of teacher shortages. There are still people who want to show up for the next generation, right? But the thing that's stopping them is that they don't yet have a bachelor's degree. So what we are doing is working with school communities, districts, and school systems to help them Cultivate, grow your own opportunities, grow your own teacher talent opportunities. The idea is to fast track those already in schools but without degrees. And for about half of what it would cost at many brick and mortar institutions, this program says it can beat the cost because they know how to find the money you might be eligible for. We have a number of different ways to make that more affordable, right? Students could come to us, if you have some college, you could still be Pell eligible, right? Which means that you can get a large grant to take care of your entire bill and have maybe like a $200 balance, right? And so it is very flexible. Um, there's also some fellowship opportunities where your, your program could be fully funded. You know, there, we have so to really explore. So you help people figure out how to make it more Our affordable. Our whole goal is about mitigating the barrier to your degree completion. At the end of the day, a bump in the path doesn't have to keep anyone from being a teacher. The end of the detour is along these pathways. Paula Tupman, Local piano. 4. So to I have them exactly right. All right, Paula, 